Hello, and welcome everyone to the North Carolina Smart Grid webinar series. We're pleased that you decided to take a little time out of your schedule to join us today. My name is Alex Glenn, and I work with Advanced Energy as a training consultant and instructional designer. I've worked in the energy industry for 15 years, and I'm happy to be your host and facilitator for today's webinar. As an independent nonprofit that works with most of North Carolina's electric utilities, Advanced Energy's mission is to help our state's electric utility customers get the most value out of the money that they spend. To help our state's residents make well-informed energy decisions, we want to share information about new technologies and services when we believe that they can offer value, and we also want to share any concerns that may present risk. This webinar series is being developed using the North Carolina Public Benefits Funds, administered by Advanced Energy and Duke Energy, along with generous technical support from North Carolina's electric membership cooperatives, Duke Energy and Dominion Power. North Carolina's electric utilities are modernizing their power generation and distribution systems. This transformation of our electric grid offers improved performance and growth opportunities for citizens, communities, and businesses. We're pleased to bring you information about smart grid technologies and systems that are being deployed in North Carolina and how you might be able to benefit from them. Today, we bring you the third webinar in our series, Smart Meters and Advanced Metering Infrastructure, often called AMI. And as a reminder, we have two additional smart grid topics planned for the remainder of 2017, including microgrids and grid resiliency in September and self-optimizing systems in October. Please join us for the last two webinars in this series as each one will cover new information as well as relevant connections between these different technologies. We'd like to hear from you during this webinar. Please feel free to post your questions or comments in the Q&A box on the right side of the screen. We will answer as many questions as we can at the end of today's presentation. I would also like to mention the website that we have developed where we will be making additional smart grid resources available to you. We'll be posting case studies, educational videos, upcoming events, and links to all of our resources. So please make sure to visit ncsmartgrid.org to access more information. Please note that a recorded version of this webinar will be made available to you. We will send a follow-up email to access the webinar recording as well as the additional links to these smart grid resources. In today's webinar, we will recap a couple of key points from our Smart Grid Basics webinar while we dig deeper into the topic of smart meters and advanced metering infrastructure in North Carolina. We have two speakers, Cyrus Doster and Dennis Mabe, who will provide an overview of AMI technologies and examples of how AMI is being implemented in North Carolina. At the end of today's webinar, we will also be sharing a new case study video with Brunswick Electric Membership Corporation about their deployment of AMI systems. Cyrus Doster is an energy consultant with Advanced Energy, and he has worked on our building science and engineering teams. His current work focuses on electric vehicles, solar assessments, and smart grid education. Cyrus will provide us an overview of AMI technology, policies and economic factors, and the challenges and benefits of AMI systems in North Carolina. Then, Dennis Mabe will join us. Dennis Mabe is a graduate of NC State University in electrical engineering and a licensed professional engineer in North Carolina. Dennis is currently the Vice President of Engineering and Operations with Randolph Electric Membership Corporation and has worked for them for 24 years. He will provide a detailed overview of how Randolph EMC smart meter deployment and how they enhanced customer services through AMI technology and systems. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to our first speaker, Cyrus, who will deliver the first section of our presentation. Thanks, Alex, and thank you to everyone online for joining us today. As Alex mentioned, my section is going to cover the basics of AMI technology, 
discuss some related policies and economic factors, and conclude with an overview of the challenges and benefits of AMI. Before we get into all that, I want to start with a quick review of some definitions from the Smart Grid Basics webinar. I'll talk a little bit about how AMI relates to a smart grid, and then share a snapshot of ongoing AMI deployment in North Carolina. So digging into some definitions, when we refer to the electric power grid, we mean the system of wires, switches, and other equipment that brings electricity from where it's generated to where it's needed. Now, it's hard to boil down smart grid to just one sentence, but if we try, we can define smart grid as the integration of new sensors, controls, and communication networks with a traditional power grid. And then our topic for today, advanced metering infrastructure, which we'll often call AMI, that replaces traditional mechanical electric meters with a system that integrates electronic smart meters, communication networks, data centers, and software to improve and automate meter data collection. This next slide shows a way to visually define smart grid. You can picture it as an integration of modern technology on the electrical infrastructure with advanced communications and controls overlaid as an intelligence infrastructure. AMI is an example of the types of intelligence infrastructure that enable key smart grid functions. Focusing now on that AMI, it supports the transition to a smart grid by enabling better data collection and analysis. Smart meters are a key component of an AMI system because they measure the desired data and transmit it to the power company. By improving the quality of their meter data and the analysis, the electric companies can then enhance their customer services and their operations. So how far along is North Carolina on the transition to advanced metering infrastructure? This data was published by the Edison Foundation in 2015, and it shows North Carolina in the middle tier of smart meter deployments as compared to the rest of the nation. We estimate that North Carolina will approach or hit that 50% threshold of the top tier within the next two years. North Carolina's electric membership cooperatives began deploying smart meters over 10 years ago and are now about 100% converted. Our municipal and investor-owned utilities are also switching to smart meters. Uh, for example, Duke Energy is in the middle of deployment in North Carolina with approximately 700,000 smart meters installed and about 50,000 more being installed each month. Now let's turn to some specifics on AMI systems. What are the types of meters involved? What are the basic parts of an AMI system? And what are some of the related policies and business opportunities? Naturally, meters are the core of an advanced metering system, and new meters are required to make AMI work. This slide shows traditional mechanical meters on the left, which can have either a dial or odometer style display. And smart meters are shown on the right, which are electronic meters with a digital display. In addition to measuring energy use, smart meters include electronics to communicate that information to the power company, typically using a wireless connection. This image shows a simplified overview of an AMI system. A data center at your power company is set up to collect, store, and analyze the electric meter data. Smart meters are installed at industrial, commercial, and residential facilities, and they send energy usage data to the data center through communications devices that are installed as part of the power grid or installed separately from the grid, such as a cellular network. The software at the data center can then analyze the smart meter information for billing, outage management, preventive maintenance, grid management, or even notifying customers of potential problems. And that data can also be made available for the customer to see, either through a web tool or an in-home device. With regard to policies related to smart meters, the North Carolina Clean Energy Technology Center recently released the first issue of a new report they've titled The 50 States of Grid Modernization. While North Carolina's legislature is not currently considering proposals related to AMI, there is a proposal in front of the Utilities Commission to define fees that can be assessed to customers of Duke Energy who opt out of having a smart meter installed. These opt-out fees have been proposed to recover the cost of maintaining the systems and processes to support the manual collection of metering data that AMI would otherwise replace. 
Looking more broadly across the nation, states like Kentucky, Maryland, Maine, Michigan, New York, and Texas are all considering legislative proposals related to that same fee question, as well as questions like whether utilities can reduce their meter reading schedule for customers who opt out, or whether customers can provide their own smart meter as long as it meets utility performance standards. Other issues that may be addressed via policy are utility cost recovery, data security, and rate structures. Turning now to economic factors related to AMI and grid modernization, North Carolina already has hundreds of companies serving the smart grid supply chain, from small early stage startups to very large multinational businesses. Several of these companies provide the products and services that make up AMI systems, smart meters, data centers, communications networks, and analysis tools. And the logos here represent just a handful of those companies. Continued smart meter deployments, both within North Carolina and around the country, generate opportunities for these businesses and economic growth for our state as a whole. So now that we've seen a bit about the technology, the associated policies, and economics, I wanted to share a little bit about the challenges and benefits of AMI. Concerns about cybersecurity and some misconceptions about smart meters are some of the challenges that must be overcome to then realize the benefits of improved customer service and grid operations. As you can surely imagine, ensuring data security is a critical requirement for an AMI system. To help ensure that security of customer information, smart meters generally do not send personally identifying information, and the energy data that is sent can be encrypted. In addition, smart meters only report total energy usage, not the energy used by specific appliances or devices in the home or the building. During the transmission and storage of that data, it really must be kept secure, since energy usage data can easily indicate important information such as when a building is likely to be occupied or not. Beyond data security, there are a few concerns about smart meters that turn out not to be true. For example, smart meters are just as accurate, if not more accurate, than traditional meters. And for meters that use wireless communications, the radio frequency emissions are actually lower than emissions from other common household devices, like cell phones, baby monitors, microwaves, or even wireless routers. Electric meters are also typically located farther from people than those other devices, which reduces potential exposure to those emissions. For more information, I think a good resource is the whatissmartgrid.org website. From that homepage, you can select smart meters under the Smart Grid 101 menu to learn more. And that website is a product of the Smart Grid Consumer Collaborative and includes several other helpful fact sheets and videos. Turning to the potential benefits of AMI, there's really a wide range of opportunities for both the power company and their customers. And we're going to learn a lot about these in the upcoming case studies. As a brief overview, customers gain access to their detailed energy usage data and can use that to track improvements as they invest in making their home or business more energy efficient. Customers can also make use of new payment options, like prepaid billing and they can receive notifications of high energy use that may indicate a serious problem at their home or business, like a hot water leak or a heating and cooling system that needs repair. AMI also offers operational benefits to power companies, which in turn benefit their customers. For example, smart meters can help a power company identify outage areas much more accurately and respond more quickly. Meter reading expenses and personnel can be redirected to other important functions, and smart meter data can identify equipment that may be overloaded or damaged, and those issues can actually be addressed before they cause an outage. So that's a very high-level overview of the challenges and benefits related to AMI. And now we're going to dive a bit deeper with a case study from Dennis Mabe of the Randolph Electric Membership Corporation. As Alex mentioned, Dennis has been with Randolph EMC since 1993 and now serves as their Vice President of Engineering and Operations. He's going to talk with us about how Randolph has deployed AMI and how they're using that smart meter data. Over to you, Dennis. Thanks, Cyrus. I will talk today about our AMI deployment, 
how the available data helps us make decisions, and where our analytics processes are headed. First, I would like to give you a brief overview of Randolph EMC and our AMI deployment. Our main office is located in Asheboro. We serve parts of five counties. We have approximately 32,000 meters. We completed our AMI deployment single phase and three phase meters over a 30 month period. We installed the Eclara AMI system. What I would like to discuss today is how decisions start to be driven by more data since we have installed AMI. The areas we will cover are as follows. Outage management. When a member is out of power, AMI data allows us to determine the extent of the outage and whether this problem is on our system or located at the member's home. Blinking lights, if you've ever come into the house and either the stove, microwave, or DVD player, time is flashing, and you have to reset it, then you've experienced a blink that day. Fault locating, it's the next level of managing blinking lights. And when something happens on the system and either causes a blink or an outage, we consider this a fault. It's something that is not a normal process of our delivery of service, and AMI data helps speed up the process of locating the issue. Prepay, or flex pay as we call it, allows members to be in control of their bill every day and pay as they go, instead of waiting to the end of the month to get their bill. Voltage and system load monitoring. AMI data enables us to monitor and maintain the reliability of our distribution system by providing voltage feedback and load monitoring. And last but not least, analytics. AMI data allows us to give more life to our data to be enabled, enable us to be more informed and make better decisions allowing us to be proactive instead of reactive. Outage management. Once a call comes in, we're able to do what's called ping the meter and get confirmation if the power is on or not. This data allows us to verify we have power to the meter in cases where a member has a breaker trip inside their home and keeps us from rolling a truck out to their location. This slide is a snapshot of a line that is without power. The dispatcher that is handling the outage in the storm center pings the meter and gets feedback generally within 10 seconds if the power is on or off. Here we have the preferred status of our distribution system. Once the line has been restored, the dispatcher sends another ping request and waits for confirmation that power has been restored. This feature allows us to make sure everyone's power is restored before we leave an area. Blinking lights. With blinks, we try to find the problem as quickly as possible. We monitored the last 21 days of interruptions and obtained the blinks on the system, looking at the blinks since yesterday, since a week ago, 14 days ago, and then 21 days ago, and that were not caused by outages. We tried to focus on excessive blinks, five or more in a day, or 10 or more in the last 14 to 21 days. We also merged this data with our FlexPay to help figure out possible meter tampering. Once we pulled all this together, we worked on visualizing the data to help determine the device or cause of the blink. Here's a snapshot of a meter that we detected two blinks for the day. When we joined this blink data with our outage duration table, we were able to determine that those blinks happened during an outage condition, and we ignore these blinks in this situation. This slide demonstrates how we keep track of what happened with an outage event and keeps our focus on blinks that happened during the non-outage event. You can see we had a blink count of 54 according to the meter, but for our analysis, we were only looking at it for the blink count of 52, which means no visualization is needed. So this slide gives a little more detail about how we find our troubled meters. We had over 34,000 that did not blink, 28 meters that had one, five meters that did not read, and one meter that had nine blinks since yesterday. So for the 21-day look back for this meter, there have only been nine blinks. Blink visualization is what helps us figure out the large impact that we have on our system. We tried really hard to make the data that is available in the office also available to the crews in the field. Here's the view of an excessive blink meter. When we checked on this meter, we found a center lug bro bro broken on the transformer. Here's a detailed view of the blink visualization and how much detail we have available in the office. Here's a snapshot of the blink visualization from the field crew's perspective. This slide shows blinks that only affect one transformer. This slide shows more widespread blinks and how easy it would be for crews to determine which device is blinking. Fault locating. When blinking lights affect a particular power line, we try to merge all of our known data to help locate this issue. Here's a slide that represents a blinking light issue. We analyzed all of our data and determined the possible location of the fault. 
In this case, our analysis identified the exact location of the issue. The further down the line the fault is located, it makes it a little harder to find the issue. But in this case, we have multiple locations that could be contributing to the issue. Here's another example of locating the fault. The distance between the X marks is about 1,500 feet, with the problem being located at the second X. FlexPay offers many advantages to our members. It allows members to pay as they go and avoid paying the large deposit. They are able to see their daily usage via our online portal or our smartphone app. AMI systems also allow for us to remotely disconnect. Whether it's manual or remote disconnects, there is always the possibility of someone meter tampering. We verify switch position along with the blinking light information. The status of a disconnected meter should always be closed, open, or armed. If the status is indeterminate and the member also had a blink that day, there is a possibility of meter tampering. Voltage and system load monitoring data from our AMI system allows us to monitor our system voltage every day and also reduce our load during peak times. This slide is a snapshot of our 240 volt meters. The nominal range is the gray banner and all of the meters from both read times fall inside this range. Here's a snapshot of our 120 volt meters. All are inside the nominal range. Conservation Conservation voltage reduction allows us to help lower our monthly power bill by using our AMI network to monitor and adjust our voltage without, a, without affecting reliability. RMC has about 250 generators on our system that we use for power supply resources in an emergency situation. AMI data allows us to monitor the status of these generators during a control event for resources. This slide represents the beginning of a control period with different stages of feedback from the generators. Here's a snapshot later in the control event with almost all of the generators operating. With 15-minute data available from our AMI system, we have been able to build load shapes for these control events. At the top of the screen, we can actually see how much load was in the group of meters and how much load was dropped during the control. At the bottom, we were able to see which generators did not control. Analytics. It's all about giving life to our data and making better decisions with it. Some of the areas we are focused in our efforts are system losses, CVR, identifying member problems before they are aware of the issue, identifying member load profiles for targeted marketing, forecasting transformer failure and improving efficiency for losses, and finally stress testing rates, either new rate designs or weather impact on existing rates. Here's an example of our system losses. At the top in the orange table is our system losses that are in the 5 to 6 percent range. And the chart at the bottom is where we are moving with our AMI data. Detailed analysis of our system to pick out our poor performing feeders. Analytics will allow us, allow us to take our system load data and after a CVR event, calculate the true savings for our system as you can see the area in red from the sample control event. Here's an example of a member issue that affected two billing months. With analytics, we are hoping to catch these issues early and notify the member of a potential problem before they get their bill. I hope that during this presentation you gained a little more insight about the value of deploying an AMI system and the data it brings, opens up doors for carrying reliability and customer service to a whole new level. And with that, I will hand it back over to you, Alex. Dennis, thank you so much. We really appreciate that overview there uh, and the experience that you and Randolph have had with deployment of the AMI system. Uh, so thank you, Cyrus and Dennis. You both certainly covered a lot of ground and definitely helped all of us gain a better understanding of AMI and the challenges and opportunities of integrating smart meters into our electric grid. I hope this webinar has given all of you on the line a helpful overview of the technology and how your utility can use it to improve their operation and their services to customers. Now before we get into the Q&A period, We'd like to remind everyone that the conversation will continue with the two remaining webinars in our Smart Grid series on microgrids and self-optimizing systems. We're excited to take a deeper look at these technologies, and we hope that you will join us again. So please keep a lookout for an email invitation to these next two webinars uh, and registration information. Also, as a reminder, we'll be sharing case studies
educational videos, and links to all of the Smart Grid resources on this website, ncsmartgrid.org. Here you will find resources referenced in today's webinar as well, including the 50 States of Grid Modernization Report by the North Carolina Clean Energy Technology Center, and the fact sheets and videos from the Smart Grid Consumer Collective. So please do flag that website and go take a look at those resources that we've set out there for you. So at this point, we'd like to take a few minutes to open up the line and answer some of the questions and comments that have come in during the webinar. Please understand we may not have time today to answer all of the questions, or we may not have an immediate answer to a question, but in either case, we will do our best to follow up with you after doing some research or finding the best resource for you. So please feel free, if you've got a question, to use the Q&A box on the right side of the screen and go ahead and put that in there, and we'll work with you to address that today. Cyrus, let's take a look at some of the questions that have come in. Sure thing, Alex. Uh, we've got a couple, and I think I'm going to throw most of these at Dennis. Uh, Dennis, the first is a question regarding what was the impact on meter readers when Randolph rolled out smart meters? Uh, were those jobs eliminated, or did you have another another process or plan in place for that? Cyrus, when we started looking at AMI, we we made the plan early so that when we needed to replace a meter reader that either took another position uh, or we had got to the point where we needed to add another meter reader for growth. Uh, we did that with contractors, and so we just worked out a contract with a contractor to read those meters so that we would have less of an impact when the time finally came for us to deploy our meters. Um, those contractors and the two meter readers that remained ended up doing our meter changeout for us. And so at the end of the day, when everything was finished, uh, there were two positions available inside the office uh, with our storm center. Uh, been 24-7, and we just transitioned those employees to that position. Oh, that's terrific. Uh, our next question is related to the topic of opt-outs. Um, and wondering you know, if you can share any experience on how many of your members uh, opted out of having a smart meter, and how, how did your utility handle that? We initially had um, about a dozen that requested to opt out uh, of the smart meters. But once we were able to explain to them about what the meter really does, uh, that number uh, settled down. And we only ended up with a couple of people that uh, op that truly opted out and wanted the manually read meter. Uh, so the board put a policy in place uh, to where we would recoup some of that cost. Uh, but at the end of the day, there was only a couple meters. And do you have any details on that, the cost impact of that for the customers that you can share? Uh, I, I believe our policy was about $25 a month uh, for a manual red meter. Okay, great. And um, uh, lastly, we have a question. How would you characterize the overall response, uh, uh, including any concerns uh, about the switch to smart meters that you got from your, your customer members? I think the majority of the response was was well taken. Uh, I think the uh, once the members had a little bit um, more access to the data and to be able to monitor their usage and see what's going on every day, or the fact that when they call in and say that they're out of power, that we can tell them, hey, we've got power at your meter base. Can you check your main breaker? And they go and they've got a main breaker trip. I, I think it uh, it really made a difference in that customer service. And um, I, I think it was. I, I think our members really enjoy it. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Um, how has uh, participation and usage of the online tools uh, changed over time? Uh, we don't have as many using it as we would like, but uh, we keep every month. There's more and more people that are using the portal or our online app. Great. Well, that actually brings us to the end of the questions that we have. Uh, if someone thinks of a last-minute question, don't hesitate to pop it into that Q&A box for us. 
Um, but uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Alex. Thank you, guys. Um, those were certainly some very thoughtful questions. And thank you to everyone who did submit a question to us. At this time, we'll need to move on. And we'd like to end today's webinar by sharing a new case study video with Brunswick Electric Membership Corporation about AMI deployment and how Brunswick and their customers are realizing the benefits of AMI. In the video, we'll hear about their fully deployed AMI system and how it's being used to provide a prepaid billing program, along with other service enhancements. Now, we saved this video until the end because depending on your internet connection, you may experience some lag time or delays in viewing. If you do have any problems watching the video, please check your inbox for an email from us that will include a link to this video that you can watch at your convenience. So we will not be coming back after we play this video. The webinar will close once we have finished this video. But we wanted to say thank you. We're very grateful that you chose to take time out of your day to join us for this webinar. We hope that you enjoy the video and have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Advanced Metering Infrastructure, or AMI, is the name for new technologies that provide two-way communication with smart meters. The technologies enable electric companies to analyze energy usage, identify potential problems, provide better electric service, and implement programs that can help their customers. One example of AMI in action is seen at Brunswick Electric Membership Corporation, located in North Carolina. Brunswick Electric's been here since 1939. Uh, we are in southeast North Carolina. We're coastal as well as farm community, very diverse membership. Uh, we have over 90,000 members. We're second in the state as far as uh, members. AMI is wonderful. One AMI is a uh, tool that has allowed us to do wonderful things for our members. Uh, we're able to now get readings monthly, daily, hourly. Uh, we can actually help members uh, identify problems that we couldn't identify before. Uh, Brunswick Electric decided to switch to an AMI system for a multitude of reasons. Among them, increased efficiency, better accuracy, um, the dependability of the AMI system. When we decided to go with an AMI system, um, integrating the equipment involved first installing new substation equipment, and also once that was in place, replacing all of our existing meters. As you can imagine, that was a fairly large and somewhat costly undertaking. Um, with that said, I think the biggest challenge was just organizing um, the phases of the project and um, coordinating everything that needed to take place within different departments. So internally at BMC, we're using that hourly data and the voltage readings to monitor how our system is performing. For example, we use the hourly data to identify any potentially overloaded transformers. That way we can replace them before there's actually a failure. It also goes into our modeling software so that we can see not just snapshot of the system, but how the system is reacting over a period of time. Because of AMI, we've been able to integrate our prepay system with our CIS system. Uh, originally, those were two standalone systems, and uh, now we need to maintain just one program, so it was a, a huge benefit for us. Secondly, we've started a monitoring program for our members uh, where we take the usage data hourly and we look for irregularities and try to identify problems um, that the customer may, may be unaware of. Uh, so if we see a high usage, we'll immediately contact that member and help them diagnose what the problem may be. So the prepaid billing program operates in reverse of how a utility company would normally do business. Instead of billing the member at the end of the month for the usage they've incurred over the month, where they're actually paying for it in, in advance. This provides several benefits to the cooperative, including a reduction in delinquent payments, um, there's a reduction in write-offs, and also in the amount of site visits for disconnects and reconnects. 
For our members, the benefits include, first of all, we, we don't require a deposit for our prepaid customers. That takes some of the financial burden away uh, initially for our new customers. We also have eliminated a lot of the fees associated with a normal customer, including uh, late charges, disconnect fees, and reconnect fees. And they're also getting a better understanding of how they are using their energy through the use of in-home displays. They are updated twice daily. AMI sends out a, an update to show them what the remaining balance is. Some of our newer members are actually migrating toward our email alert system, which uh, lets them know once their balance falls below a certain level. And they're also starting to use our Smart Hub app, which allows them not only to see their remaining balance, but also their hourly usage in the graphical display. The members seem to be really happy with our prepay program. Prepay is just one program that is enabled by AMI. This smart technology provides an opportunity for utilities to implement additional energy efficiency and demand response programs. Overall, AMI is a smart choice that provides numerous benefits for both electric utilities and their customers.